originally from Detroit, Michigan, mm -hmm. and here in Pittsburgh. It'll be uh, 18 years in March. I was offered a job at WPXI. Oh, I was working okay. in Dayton, Ohio at WDTN. Uh, that contract was coming to an end. Okay. I was looking for a job in the Baltimore area, but ended up being offered a job here and flew in one night um, prior to the interview the next morning and came through the tunnels and saw the city and oh, all of its lights and yes. fell in love with it <laughs> and uh, subsequently was hired and that was back in, in March of 93. Uh, so. I'm from Pittsburgh, born in the Hill District, raised in the Hill District and still live in the Hill District. I always wanted to do something in television and okay. I knew I always wanted to be in television. I didn't always know that I wanted to be in news. Mm -hmm. Um, but I always wanted to be, to do television. You know, and I think you have to learn that regardless. Um, being from here doesn't have anything to do with separating your emotions from the story. For the most part, you have to be able to separate your emotions. Mm -hmm. In the same vein, sometimes it is those emotions that help you cover a story effectively because you are human and you have to be sympathetic and empathetic to whatever the story is. We still have a long, long way to go. I mean, let's just look at Pittsburgh right now. In the last year, we have seen Patrice King Brown, Tara Edwards, Danielle Nottingham, and Kimberly Easton all leave the airwaves of this television market. There's something wrong with a city that allows four African American women go off the air, and none of them have been replaced with other African American women. And the community hasn't had an outcry. What's going on? Where are our black women? So there's a problem there. There's a disconnect that A, it's been allowed to happen, and B, nothing's being done about it. Um, so not only are our television stations wrong for allowing that to happen, our community is equally as wrong for not being very vocal about saying, where are the people who look like us? I mean, here's the reality. There are little children that are sitting at home that want to be able to turn on the television and see people who look just like them when they turn on that television. And if they're not there, what message are we sending our kids? Um, you know, I mean, here's the other reality. I look around our television station right here. Uh, we don't have people that are under the age of 50 coming up behind us. I'm not worried about me. I'm worried about the young people. I'd like to be able to say, hey, come here, let me train you to do my job. But who are they? Where are they? Um, you know, I mean, the doors are open, but if there aren't people coming in behind us, who's here? Think of nearly every field. Um, a career or endeavor, for the most part, African Americans are present, have been at some point, have very viable, successful positions. Mm -hmm. There's few of us there, not necessarily, we're, we're still obviously in the minority, mm -hmm. but that has lots to do with the number of people who are either pursuing that particular career or working towards it. Um, I'm not foolish enough to think that they're not barriers or that people don't face racism or okay. discrimination. I do understand that that's there. I just think when we start infiltrating our own thoughts about it, it then makes it harder for ourselves to even get past that. I always had a love of writing. Even as a child, I used to write all of these short stories constantly okay. about whatever. So writing okay. was, was my first love. Well, I was in college, mm -hmm. um, and because I'd done so much writing prior to that in mm -hmm. high school, for a small publication on the east side of Detroit and some things here and there. Mm -hmm. um, I got uh, a job uh, while I was a, a, a sophomore in, in college at uh, WGPR, which was the first uh, African-American owned and operated station in wow. the country. It's no longer wow. in existence, but it was the first television and radio station. And I started working there while I was still in school at okay. Wayne State. Uh, worked for a couple of years. I did a show called Strictly Speaking, which was a talk show, almost like Oprah's show. Yeah. It was a small studio yeah. audience. We'd have guests mm -hmm. from, you know, across Detroit, a lot of celebrities that came into town I would do interviews with. So I did that while I was still in college. I, I have several role models. Oprah, I would definitely say, is one of them. And, and not so much for her wonderful career on television and as a television host. Uh, but more so for her philanthropy and who she is, her, her being, and what she is challenging people to think about themselves and challenge themselves to. She has totally changed the scope of what it means to be a television 
a talk show host. She really causes all of us to live our best. In fact, I think on her magazine it says, live your best life now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm truly encouraged by that, and I love that. Anderson Cooper is one of them for mm -hmm. CNN. Um, he is a go-getter. He you know, will be out in the field working on a story, gathering the details, and just as much as when he's sitting in the anchor chair and working hard. I really, really enjoy watching him and, and watch him take form and craft as, as he does that. Um, you know what? I'm going to be honest. I never had any inspiration in the media. Mm -hmm. um, my greatest inspiration was my mother. That's right. Um, mm -hmm. Who told me that I could do anything that I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Who told me, real basically, mm -hmm. even if you only have one dress, that one dress can be cleaned and ironed. Okay. You have to wash it every day. Um, you can still look good in that one dress. Mm -hmm. My mother, who said to me, whatever it is you want to do, you have the ability to do it if you put your mind to it. Okay. So when those other people told me, you can't be on TV, my mother looked at me and said, why not? Um, so I can't say that it was, uh, you know, we didn't even get KDKA on our TV when I was growing up. Because uh, we didn't have cable. Yeah. Uh, we got Channel 4. <laughs> and when I came down here for an interview, everybody said, you're going to... Read, 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 read. Read the newspaper, read the internet, watch news, um, do well in school, particularly English and social studies. Um, but I wouldn't limit it to that because you could do science, another language. I mean, expand your knowledge base. We like to think we know a little bit about a lot of things. I don't know a lot about things, but I, I can probably have about any conversation on, on certain subjects because I have to stay very versed and I'm certain I still so much more that I need to learn in life but as a result of being in this industry I get to hear a lot and see a lot and that is what's really important so if it's something that somebody if someone is interested in this uh, business that is what they want to do is to read write spend a lot of time writing watch the news ask a lot of questions be outgoing all of those things are important Yeah. Um, if there's breaking news going on or if our crews are out uh, working on a particular story and they need to call the police or fire, this is where you start to the assignment desk. Uh, people call the assignment desk with information, news tips, that's how we know about things okay. that are going on and they, there's always somebody here. Okay. Um, they're listening to the fire scanners, the radio scanners, so they dispatch the crews, it's like the heart of everything. functions for the early show, like the five and six. Jeff functions for my shows, the ten and the nine. So literally everything that you saw with Dave and in terms of the setup and the still talk to him and take a picture. It happens with um, me and Dave. And so that same...